Co-length headers are no small feat, ladies and gentlemen. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode seven, eight, nine. I don't even know anymore. Um, this episode, we are going to start the hot side. Now that the transmission and motor is all mounted, uh, pretty much 90% complete where it's gonna be forever. We're gonna wax the front end off of this thing um pull the cooling stack out bumper all the rad saddle fenders inner fenders everything so i can get right in here to start the header build um the plan for the headers is all equal length inch and three quarter runners two and a half inch collectors uh, i have the collectors already they're press formed from stainlessheaders.com yeah inch and three quarter runners and two and a half inch um, collectors into a T6 flange on the turbo. It's gonna be a true divided setup. I'm gonna run two 50 mil wastegates, uh, one for each bank, obviously. I know a lot of guys are gonna think it's small, but um, with the size of the turbo, I want to keep the airspeed inside the exhaust and the hot side rather than have a huge tube that needs to fill a lot of volume before it gets to the turbo. I'd like to keep the velocity, like I said, um, to try and eliminate as much turbo lag as I possibly can. Again, it's a pretty good sized turbo. It's dual ball bearing, so that's gonna help a lot. And uh, yeah, again, this truck is primarily gonna be street driven. So as much fun as I can keep in the truck on the street where it's you know less of a race car driving around and more of just a fun street truck that i can turn up and set on kill if we're going to go to the track with it um i want to push it that direction i'm going to go ahead and get the front end whacked off of here and then uh that'll be that i should have header flanges tomorrow so i have everything else like i said i have the collectors i have all my tubing um so i'm hopefully this weekend today's thursday so hopefully between tomorrow and this weekend i can get a rough idea of what the headers are going to look like i can maybe get some spatial uh tubing in there to kind of emulate what the header size is going to be as a package and then i'm hoping i can kind of run a chunk of five inch to start the downpipe again to kind of gauge space and see where everything is going to kind of work out. I got to keep in mind, I have to have spark plugs that are very serviceable. I do not want to make that a pain in the ass to change spark plugs if, you know, we're stuck on the middle of wherever, if we're doing a drag and drive or something. Um, I want to make those very serviceable. I want to make it so that the coils are out of a lot of the heat as much as I can. I don't know where the coils are going to wind up yet. So that's going to be something to keep in mind during all of this. And then obviously spark plug wire, safety, keeping them away from heat. That's going to be a huge thing as well. So I guess let's take the front end off. Oh boy, we got a race car now. Got a bit more tearing down to do, but we can really get in there nice and easily now to build some headers. Kind of screwed myself by putting the truck on the hoist because I had to open the doors way up to get the inside fender bolts out, which I actually should have taken out yesterday because I knew we were going to do this and the truck was already outside when we flipped it around and everything. So, oh, well, not that big a deal. We can push it back in the morning and get it back up. But, uh, yeah, I've never, ever had the fenders off of this truck before. I've owned it coming up on 11 years. So pretty cool to see it like this. It's going to be even cooler when there's a whole pile of hot side stuff going on. I'm really, really excited to have some super shiny tube work in here and uh yeah this is going to make it substantially easier to do some work on so i haven't mounted this yet strictly because i really want to see how this whole area is going to come together there obviously there's going to be two two and a half inch tubes here that come into the bottom of the turbo and bringing that all through here is going to be really tight with a rad hose ac hoses heater core hoses I'm a little nervous, so I haven't fully committed to mounting that to the head yet. 
Worst case scenario, it's in a really good spot. You guys have seen I can push it forward an inch or whatever if I have to. It's really, uh, there's a ton of room this side of it. So it's a pretty cool spot right now, but uh, it's not the end of the world. It has to move a little bit further forward too. So, and I know somebody's going to call me out on this sooner or later on the compressor being wide open, but that's actually one that failed uh, on a car last summer. So it's turned into our mock-up one. So it's not the compressor that's going to wind up in the truck. It's just a dead unit that we use for mock-up. So I don't have to spend 500 bucks on a compressor and just have it sit there. So yeah, pretty cool. Good start for the weekend. 12 seconds later. Went ahead and threw a little uh, bullshit bracket together. And by that, I mean, used a tranny mount spacer from a Belltech kit to just toss this uh, clear view guy in. Literally just like one bolt right into the head. Again, I'm just trying to smash a bunch of stuff in here as best I can to take up as much room and start fiddling space wise. I'm hoping to put that thing there. If that is kind of where it's going to wind up, I'll more than likely, you know, use a couple of these bolts uh, and then 3D print some type of carbon, nylon, something or other, uh, just like oil drain sort of doodad so that I'm not dumping oil on the alternator or the hot pipes or whatever is going to wind up in there. But that's the tentative home for that rough area. I um, also went ahead and just kind of really quickly blasted together a little chunk of 5-inch. to sort of resemble a downpipe, kind of where I'm thinking it's going to wind up. But it's already taking up a pile of room here for a header. So, I don't know. We'll see. I might have to prioritize the header over this, or I don't know. As long as I leave enough room down there to get that through, because this truck will get a full exhaust. I'm not doing a stupid fender exit or a hood exit. So, yeah. Open, I have header flanges tomorrow, and then we'll start. Okay, kitties, I said that we are going to build headers on Friday, and it's now... Uh, a week plus a couple days since I said that. Uh, the fun fact of living in Canada is UPS doesn't give a shit about you at all and charges you an arm and a leg for everything. So, a uh, big shout out to Taylor at uh, Streetcar Fab and or Taylor's Insane Turbo Systems. Um, he machined me some billet stainless LS flanges for my headers. And uh, they're going to be super cool. Um, these don't really exist, especially for inch and three-quarter tube. So I'll ask Taylor really nice. He makes all of our merge flanges for our turbo systems. So I kind of figured I could coerce them into doing this. And here they are. So I'm going to run the dogs home quick to get some dinner in them. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start building these turbo headers. Finally, after a long wait. So, yeah, it's going to be a fun night. Small update, this is what I started with. And decided I was going to start on this side. But uh, I've since changed my mind because I absolutely hate how this looks. <clears throat> so, this is kind of where I'm heading. I don't know if this is going to work out either, but I'm going to try and mirror that to this side and see where it kind of lands me for steering and brake lines. Try to make it look like that. And uh, I'll update you after that. I'm going to start this section with saying that I completely ignored this tube and the turbo mount that I changed uh, when I started this video. So um, you guys already know that I was waiting for flanges for the headers. So I kind of didn't really have anything to do of value. So what I decided to do was tack this three and a half inch titanium cold pipe together. It is not a hundred percent lined up or fit. It's close enough that I was able to put the three and a half inch clamp on there and 
There's no sleeve on that. It's just the clamp sitting on there. It's actually the two flanges are taped together to the uh, intercooler, but you can't see that. Um, I really wanted to get this. This tube is important to me to be vertical. If you look in the engine bay so that it looks vertical this way. And then not that you're ever really probably going to be able to tell, but I wanted these two tubes vertically that way. So they're pretty close. Um, they're not perfect because the turbo and the engine are not on the same plane. That being said, that tube is pretty close to where it's going to wind up. I've said it a hundred times already. Uh, once the nine inch shows up for this thing, this drivetrain angle might change ever so slightly. So that's why I'm not uh, welding that solid yet or building it solid. Um, I want to make sure that this is 100% where it's going to live, like exact before I weld that out. I was thinking about this last night laying in bed and I'm not going to do this side like this. It's still going to be equal length. I'm going to focus on this setup for the time being. I was able to get this runner in here tonight and there's a quarter inch difference between these two. Um, but the way that this is going to work out, actually, these are both, this is 15 and a half and this is 15 and a quarter right now. So I, I did those two, I planned out my firing order. So the firing order for this side, ignore that side, it goes eight, two, six, four. So number eight is going to go first, then two, and then I'm going to have six here and four on this side so that as it fires, it's actually doing this. Um, so it creates a vortex in there. Hopefully that speeds the air up a little bit better even yet. So got those two made. These other two are going to come up and back and over top of these two yet. And I'm going to be able to take the collector and sit it down kind of like that. So it's going to be tight. I'm going to be able to add on, you know, I'm not exactly 100% that this is going to wind up, you know, right where I'm holding it, but it's going to be damn close. These are probably actually going to wind up closer to maybe 16 and a half or 17 inches all said and done, which I'm okay with because that gets me closer to that 20 inch goal uh, that I was talking about before. <laughs> So I did that, I went ahead and made sure the five inch downpipe was totally capable. I like this much better than what I had in there beforehand. Um, it looks a whole lot smoother and it goes down kind of right off the hop. It's not sitting way up here. Not that it was that high before, but it's not sitting way up high and it's not just a straight piece of tube out of the turbo. It kind of goes down and flows. So there's still lots of room down here. Um, and I have lots of room. This might wind up get shortened up a little bit, but this stud is going to leave and uh, I'll probably put some heat uh, barrier after this fold in the firewall and then you can't see it because it's dark down there, but I have lots of room to uh, bend down and then get up into that tranny tube rigmarole I made earlier. So yeah. Turbo is now mounted off the engine. I ditched the chassis mount, as I've said a hundred times again, once we got rid of the motor plates, that was not gonna work anymore. So um, I'm hoping that I have kind of a rough plan for this side. I'll be able to make the other two runners pretty quickly and get this collector done at least. Let me tell you, building equal length headers and paying attention to the firing order really sucks. I've never built equal length headers on anything but a motorcycle before. Um, every set of headers that I've always built has just been like, make them fit the car and look as nice as possible. So equal length blows. I'm probably never gonna do that again, unless somebody, you know, really, really has to have it. But uh, this guy's ready to go home. Yeah, so I'm gonna focus on that side, get that header done. I also had another train of thought. I'm not gonna, like I said before, I'm not gonna have this one an exact mirror of this side. A few reasons for that. Number one, the brake booster and master situation, I really do not wanna fuck with. I really like these factory lines and I've already wrecked that one once I cut this tube out, but that's besides the point. Um, so, Another benefit, I'm gonna move this probably further down in here somewhere. 
and I'm hoping that by the time that I route, you know, tubes and whatever around the steering, that it kind of resembles the mess that's going on on that side. But another benefit of me moving that collector down here, theoretically, that crossover tube is going to get shorter, which means this crossover tube is going to have to be, I don't know, for lack of a better term, less long to match this one. So to keep that equal length theme going, uh, it's going to be less difficult for me. You know, even if I get four inches out of this, four inches on that side is going to be a huge, huge gain for, for that. So that's going to end it off tonight. I had a long, long day today. Um, so yeah, those two are on their way to being something. Again, there's going to be, you know, another little bit of bend on them. That'll equate for probably another inch, inch and a half, something like that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll start fidgeting with number four, number six. And maybe we can weld out the downpipe up to there and weld out the turbo header on this side. And then, uh, yeah, it'd be cool if I can get all of this hot side done in the next week or two get wastegates on it that would make me feel like i'm flying and then once that's done i can mount this for good i have some cool plans to plumb that so i'm looking forward to showing you that and then i had a couple motion parts show up as well today steam port kit and the uh, canister for the uh, back pressure sensor so I didn't buy the whole kit because getting motion stuff from the States up here is insane money. So um, we have some local options that I'm going to use instead. These, believe it or not, if I was to, I obviously can hardline stuff all day long. But by the time you nickel and dime this kit together, it's actually pretty much the same price just to buy it done. And I would rather just have it done than have to hardline it myself. It saves me a pile of time. We're off to a decent start. This has really kicked my ass so far, but I said I was gonna do it and I'm gonna see that through. So it's been a hell of a challenge, but also it should leave me lots of room to get the, doesn't look like it in this video, obviously, but if I need to change spark plugs, I have lots of room so far to just jack up the truck and go through the wheel well, which is not that difficult. I'm totally okay with that. Put an extension on it and party on. That. Uh, that does not make it that difficult. There's lots of room between the bottom side of the headers and the chassis, so I should have lots of serviceability. Still, regardless of where my coil is mounted, because I have no idea where they're gonna go yet. But anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling and go home and feed the dogs. So see you tomorrow, I hope. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back on Wednesday night. I've been farting around here with a couple of tubes and I am in a bit of a predicament because as we all know if you use two of the same radius elbows you're not going to be able to stack them on here and make them look nice so i have an idea i'm going to cut this into a 45 and hopefully be able to put some straight in here <clears throat> and kind of cheat it and make it look right and if that's not going to work then i'm going to have to order some long rat elbows or have some made or something because I don't know that I'm going to be able to live with how that is but this is coming together pretty good I'm pretty pretty happy with it so far this one's going to come obviously up on top like that it looks pretty cool some spaghetti action going on for sure so I'm going to pop the header off and I'm going to try and get that number uh, six runner to look like something and then we'll do number four and then uh, hopefully we can get this collector tacked on tonight even just temporary i'm going to pull each individual runner off obviously and back purge it and weld them all separate and then put them together as an assembly where i only have to weld the flange and the collector so i'm going to keep chugging away at these i think we're in pretty good shape though come together pretty good i think it's going to look good when it's all done all right, I'm getting frustrated, so this might be the end of the night, but I wanted to show you. I got a collector sitting in here. 
I've been jamming away on this thing for two and a half hours now, probably. I really like where the collector's sitting. This might be able to tip in a bit more just to be able to match that, but um, some things to mention. Ignore these two pieces. I just stuffed them in there and then stuffed the collector on just so I could have something to base where the collector is going to wind up off of. I'm really happy with that position. I'm really not happy with how this tube is looking because by the time, like I was saying earlier on, with a 45 here and a 45 here and a straight and a straight and a straight, there's going to be like 14 welds. And it looks kind of silly from the back side, which I know you don't really see, but I care about. And it just looks like it flows kind of weird right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause on this one with the intent of deleting this section and maybe this section off of this and researching, see if I can find a looser elbow in inch and three quarters so that I can actually, you know, lay it almost right on top. I know there's a few options available, so I'm going to dig into that tonight. My thoughts from there is I'm going to maybe take these two runners off entirely. Longer rad elbows for the top two. I'll maybe start from the collector, figure out where they go, and then I'll revisit this section here. I'm kind of using this as a jig, I guess, right now to hold the collector in place where I want it. I'll get this top section nice and tucked together, fit up to these two, and then uh, I'll revisit this. Another reason I'm not super happy is by the time number four gets up here with all its, you know, little 45s and one inch and whatever, it's already an inch longer, inch and a quarter, I can't remember, longer than these by the time it gets to here which is not ideal because to make this longer I have to make this longer so you're just chasing your tail the whole way out so I'm gonna have to try and get an inch out of this one I haven't even bothered measuring this to know where I'm at right now because I know that this part is gonna come out overall I'm happy they are starting or this one's starting to look pretty cool it is gonna lay in there really nice when it's all said and done and uh, like I said last night, I still have lots of room for spark plugs and wires. And chances are pretty good my coils are going to wind up down there. So I think I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to try and keep them a little bit shorter. No, the last one was about 40 minutes, which is way longer than I wanted them to be. But I get rambling. So, yeah. That's where this one's going to end off. Next week we'll... Maybe tackle this or maybe start this one. I'm already running out of elbows, which is crazy because the box that I bought was full. And I've got two, four, six, seven left. So equal length headers are no small feat, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, it'll be worth it. It'll be cool. Maybe it'll be worth it. Maybe it won't. I have no idea, but they're going to look cool. Some of these... Things go a lot slower than I want them to, and others go way faster. So, anyway, we will see you next week. Goodbye.